What's up everybody? It is Thursday, June 30th. That's the end of the month. That's the end of the quarter. That's the end of the first half of 2022. And we ended up with, it is all over the headlines everywhere. We ended up with the worst first half of a year in 52 years. So they said you got to go back to 1970 to see a first half this big. But remember, we were coming off of an amazing run last year in the second half of 2020 when we saw all the big pandemic-related stimulus. Not trying to, you know, paint a rosy picture here. I've been telling you now that the fiscal picture has slowed down considerably. I'm going to go over that, and for me, that's the reason for this slowdown. By the way, Atlanta Fed today came out with a revised second quarter GDP outlook and it is negative. So if that's the case, and I've been telling you this, I said we're going to get a negative print for the second quarter GDP. So that will be, that. that is the accepted definition of recession. We are in a recession, two consecutive quarters of negative growth. And I am not surprised. Again, I'm not surprised because Fiscal is very weak, and with the inflation, you know, that is a transfer to the foreign sector, so we lose that income. So that's what happens, and, and that's why GDP comes in negative. So now you have that information. <laughs> so here's the thing. Let's, let's go again and focus on the fiscal. Yesterday was another net drain. I mean, most of this month, you know, this month was a positive liquidity flow to the tune of 41 billion that's the that's so far the deficit for June 41 billion that's like really nothing I mean if you think like all last year we were running an average of 250 billion a month of deficits now we're down to 40 billion so that is a big reduction in the transfers to the non-government. Okay, remember we talked about like, you look at the personal savings went from like six trillion, now it's whatever, it's like 900 billion or something like that, that huge drop. You know, it's not because we stopped going to movie theaters and restaurants, it's because that net transfer from the government is just not happening anymore. They're taking it back. How does the government's books, you know, get balanced or how does the government's uh, deficit get reduced uh, it transfers less and that comes either through less spending or more taxes and in this case it's uh, it's both we're getting the, the the double whammy because the spending has been uh, slowed and taxes are up so you know that's why the balance is, and again, the swimming pool, what's the balance, the, the water level in the pool? I mean, if you want, let's go over the numbers. In April, the government ran a $324 billion surplus. So that's all the water out of the pool and then even below the ground. I mean, it, it went out of the pool and, and sunk way down into the dirt. And since April, well, what? We added 86 billion back in May, and we added 41 billion back in June. So that's what uh, 127 billion. You know, we're not even we're not even halfway back to what we lost. So I mean, it's not even like the swimming pool is halfway filled back up again. It's only halfway back underneath the pool, trying to get back up to the to the bottom of the pool. Right? We drained out 300 and, and we drained out the entirety of the pool and then some. And now we only made back half of the then some that we drained out. Not even half. What I say? 127 billion we, we, uh, we got back, but, you know, we're still down. What is that? Like 200 billion. So, you know, or 100, what, 190. 196, 197 billion. We're still net have net drained out almost 200 billion. Let's just round it off to 200 billion. 
I mean, to be honest, I didn't expect this. I, you know, every day now, the trend is pretty clear, and I'm seeing this every single day. And I, I go to the Treasury statement every day, and I'm like, okay, let you know, let's see. Today, hopefully, we get a nice big flow, and and you see it. I mean, every day the taxes exceed the spending, so we're on this. It's like a fixed pattern now, a fixed trend of a slow drain or a slow trend towards a balanced budget. There's only four, five times a month, I said this yesterday, and you can count on this, and you can, uh, by the way, you could trade this. It, it's not 100% reliable every single time, but it, it's, pretty, it's pretty tradable. I know because I've done it in the past. On the days where you get a net positive flow, all right, and that's the four Social Security payment days. And by the way, those Social Security payment days, as big as Social Security is, those payment days, uh, we were talking about like a 22 billion of Social Security plus your normal, you know, 14 to 17 billion, so anywhere from 37 to 39 billion, uh, then you have to minus the taxes off of that. Uh, so it's not that big of a positive flow, but you got four days a month. You could look that up on the Social Security calendar when those those payments go out. So those four days a month, those are going to be positive net liquidity flows. And then the big one is the first of every month. That's coming tomorrow, and I still think we're going to get a we're going to get a rally tomorrow, or if not tomorrow, we'll see it early next week, Monday or Tuesday. Those are tradable. That's tradable. You get a hundred billion plus, you know, tomorrow we're going to get a hundred billion plus going into the system, into the banking system. Some of that money is going to be deployed, you know, stocks and bonds. Stocks should get a lift off of that. I've been noticing a pattern. It's not, it had, the rally hasn't been happening on the day of that, uh, of those payments, those government payments, but it, it, it comes the next day. I don't know why, but I just, and maybe that's, maybe there's no, maybe it's just a coincidence, but I've been noticing that pattern and it comes the following day, so that would mean Monday. But even today, we, we bounced off the lows and it looked like we almost tried to go uh, back to even on the day, but then we settled like, kind of like in the middle of the, of the range on the downside. So that's it. Five days a month is going to be your positive liquidity days basically right now. The rest of every month, so what do we have, like 20 business days a month, right? Something like that, 20 business days a month. Out of those 20, five are gonna be positive and 15 are gonna be negative. And even if on balance, let's say on balance, we're, we're gonna have a monthly positive flow of like, you know, 40 billion or 50 billion. It's just not enough. That is not enough. We see this now. It's pretty evident that that is not enough to keep the economy um, growing in a positive, you know, with, with positive economic growth, with positive GDP. It's just not enough. Even though, unfortunately, the, the, the monthly leading spending flow is still good. I mean, you're, we're looking at 560 billion a month. I mean, if anyone would have said that back in the day pre-pandemic, hey, the government's going to net have a have a, a spending flow, a leading spending flow every month of 560 billion, we'd be like, or I even I would be like, well, we're going to the moon. But it was happening with a much smaller tax drain. Remember, I was telling you about how how. You know, we got automatic stabilizers when things get bad. You know, when things get bad, unemployment goes up, uh, food stamps go up, the disability goes up, Medicaid, all that stuff goes up. But when things, when the economy is expanding, you know, what tends to happen, you get the reverse effect. It's not automatic stabilizers. It's an automatic fiscal break. The brake gets depressed, it's like your foot on the brake pedal goes on, goes steps down harder and harder with more and more force until you end up slowing down the car or bringing it to a complete stop and that's what's happening right now. So unless that is offset with either a higher level of spending or tax cuts, 
I mean, that's what happens. The economy slows to a halt and um, we start to contract and then the automatic stabilizers kick in and that lends support at some level. But, you know, we're going we're gonna to first have to see that. We're going to have to see the layoffs. I told you yesterday that average daily unemployment benefits are starting to go up. We saw weekly uh, unemployment claims it went up to, two, there were 231,000. I mean, that's still historically a low level, but for recent, com in recent comparison, like over the last um, couple of months, that's trending higher. So is my average daily unemployment benefits. That's trending higher. So on the flip side of all this, like what do you do, right? Well, to me now, what looks like an opportunity is bonds. I mean, we're starting today, the 10-year ca uh, yield came down below 3%. Uh, the, the last I looked on the Fed fund futures, the probability of a 75 basis point rate hike in July by the Fed was now down to 80%. A week ago, it was like 96%. So that that expectation is starting to ease back a little bit. Um, so we're starting to see a, a shift. It's just the beginning. It's just a nascent uh, development, but we're starting to see a shift in the market as to expected Fed policy and, and with respect to the rate hikes. You know, there's a little bit of a tempering of the expectation now for these very aggressive hikes. And if we see, yeah, like yesterday I said, we need to see two things, really three things. But the two main things for me is if, if bond yields start to come down based on an outlook of, you know, now we're in recession, we're going to start to see job loss go up, uh, and then the expectations for Fed monetary policy is going to start to ratchet lower. And there's even going to be some speculation that the Fed's going to have to cut again. So that needs to happen. And the other thing that needs to happen is the automatic stabilizers have to kick in. And for that to kick in, we're going to see we're going to need to see higher levels of unemployment. And like I said yesterday, that, that's a shame. It's a shame that we have to wait for this. But all this stuff is political. Like Biden has no ability to pass any new fiscal agenda right now. We're getting close to the midterms. If he even um, proposed anything like that, it would be attacked immediately as inflationary or hyperinflationary. Uh, just, you know, right off the bat, just from a political aspect, uh, it would be attacked. Uh, but I think most Americans would see it like that too, uh, that, which is not um, not 100% um, correct, but that's how they would view it. They would be against it un until um, it really start until they really start to feel it personally when the recession hits and maybe they lose their jobs or whatever. So what do I think about the stock market? I think right now I, I don't think it has a lot of downside. I mean, sentiment is really really negative. Bond yields are starting to come down. We are going to start to see a pickup in these automatic stabilizers. Uh, we're not going to go to a balanced budget or, or a, bu a consistent budget surplus, but we are going to have very low levels of uh, federal deficit, which means the transfers to the economy are going to stay low and insufficient, not sufficient to um, generate uh, positive GDP growth. The other thing I was going to say is, you know, if the Fed gets going on its quantitative tightening, we could get a boost from more bank credit creation. But I'm a little bit skeptical on that, not, not on the quantitative tightening. I mean, the, the Fed has a schedule for that, even though it's proceeding really, really slow. <clears throat> we did see a $20 billion drop in the Fed's balance sheet this week. That was the first significant drop, in, you know, that we've seen, and it's tiny compared to what they're planning on doing. But I said I'm a little bit skeptical because in the last banking data, which is for the week ending June 15th, and I think I mentioned this yesterday, consumer loans rose by the smallest amount in six months. So we might be hitting a point where 
consumers are pulling back. You know, we had good growth in consumer loans, we had good growth in loans in general, and we are still seeing very good growth in commercial and industrial loans. Uh, but the consumer thing was a red flag. <coughs> um, so anyway, that's it for today, folks. Bad fiscal, market's going nowhere. I think, uh, you know, for now, it's, it's a trading environment. You got to sell the rallies until we see the things that I mentioned. If the bond yields continue to fall and we start to see the automatic stabilizers kick in, I mean, that would be uh, a, a generally more positive environment for stocks. And it's going to happen. It will happen. You just got to be a little bit patient right now. But uh, I think we're just going to bump around here along the bottom, you know, choppy, try to kind of build a base, whatever. Uh, the economic news is going to be bad, but it's going to be one of those things where it's like, you know, they might sell the economic news, but I think, I think a lot of that right now is already uh, discounted into the stock market. All right, folks, that's it. Enjoy. Bye.